Hello fantasy managers and welcome back for another video. My name's Jack and today we're going to go over our updated team selection for World Cup Fantasy where we have made a couple of changes to the squad. Please leave a like and subscribe if you guys are enjoying the World Cup Fantasy related content and head over to our second channel Footy Flare for more World Cup related and football related content over there. The link to that will be in the description down below and with that being said let's jump into the video. So let's have a look at how the starting 11 lines up first. In goals, we have stuck with Diogo Costa. In my opinion, he is the best goalkeeper option to have in World Cup Fantasy, especially considering his good match day one fixture of Ghana. I do think in general as well, it's a very good strategy to target the match day one and potentially match day two fixtures as well so that you can use your wild card chip in match day three as uh, as, the, as the tournament progresses you do get extra free transfers each match day so it's better to use those free transfers throughout the group stage where you only get two free transfers in each match day so definitely looking to use the wild card in either match days two or three which means targeting the best possible fixtures in the first one or two match days and i do think getting on this portugal defense is a great way to do so as i would expect them to get a clean sheet against ghana as Portugal's defence is pretty solo, Diogo Costa has had a superb season so far and he's a very good goalkeeper in general and at just £5 million I think it could provide a little bit better value than a couple of the other more expensive keepers at 5.5 such as Jordan Pickford and even the most expensive keepers at 6 million, whether that be Courtois, Lloris or Alisson. I think this Portugal defence can match these other teams for clean sheets and a little bit cheaper allows for extra money to be spent around the squad. Sticking with the theme of that Portugal defence, we have gone with João Cancelo as well, getting that double Portugal defence against Ghana. I can see the additional risk obviously associated with this is if Ghana do score, we miss out on two potential clean sheets from the goalkeeper and defenders. But I'm just such a massive fan of this Portugal defence and João Cancelo does have very good attacking potential as well. In eight matches throughout the World Cup qualifiers for Portugal, he did produce two assists there. So not only is he getting those attacking contributions in his domestic domestic competition for Manchester City, but he's also doing it at the international stage as well. Denzel Dumfries, another very good attacking fullback, which I would definitely implore everyone to try and get into their teams. He's one of my favorite defensive assets, just has so much attacking potential for the Netherlands. In a handful of games for Netherlands in the World Cup qualifiers, he also produced a goal and an assist there, and he was very, very good in the Euros tournament in 2020 for Netherlands as well, getting quite a few attacking contributions. So I definitely think Denzel Dumfries at £6 million, one of the most attacking defending uh, attacking defender assets you'll be able to find, and I really like the Netherlands' defence as well. They should probably be looking to get at least one or two clean sheets throughout the group stage, and they've got Senegal in match day one there. Kieran Trippier, another very, very good value defender option. He's just £5 million, a guaranteed starter for England and potentially a wing-back position. We've seen how good Trippier has been in the Premier League so far this season. He's just got so many attacking contributions for Newcastle with his assists and goals, and he has been defending very well as well there. Newcastle have got quite a few clean sheets, and hopefully England can do the same in their group, as they do have a pretty easy group compared to some of the other ones. It should be quite conducive to clean sheets, especially with Iran in their first match day. A great chance for England to kick off the tournament in a positive manner and get a clean sheet in this one. So even if Trippier isn't contributing goals or assists, which I do like him for, He's always got that good, strong base with those clean sheets for England. And the fourth starting defender at this current stage is, is Joachim Mile. He's also one of my favorite picks. He actually featured in our must-have players for World Cup Fantasy a couple of videos ago. I really like him at £4.5 million. Such a great value option. It's going to be getting uh, great starting minutes for Denmark and extremely attacking wing-back as well. He was absolutely superb for them in the Euros in 2020. And in nine World Cup qualifying matches, he's recorded five goals for Denmark, which is an absolutely mammoth amount for a defender, especially for a player who does £4.5 million to be recording. He just gets so far at the pitch and he's got such uh, good fixtures, especially with Tunisia and match day one. Definitely would be keen on a Denmark clean sheet in this one. And with how many attacking contributions Joachim Mile has been getting recently, I wouldn't be surprised if he can get forward and get himself a goal in this game. So I really, really like him at £4.5 million. In my opinion, the best £4.5 million player in the whole of World Cup Fantasy. And that is why he featured in our must-have players. 
Let's have a look at our midfielders. Now, Kevin De Bruyne is the first one here. He is probably my favorite midfield option in World Cup Fantasy. He is the main premium asset that people are going for, and he's actually one of the most owned players in World Cup Fantasy. So I don't really need to try and sell too many people on Kevin De Bruyne. He's got a great fixture of Canada in the first match day, and he was pretty good for Belgium as well, averaging an attacking contribution a game. As in four uh, World Cup qualifying matches, he recorded two goals and two assists. And we know uh, how good a form he's been in for Manchester City in his Premier League season so far. He's getting lots of goals and assists there. So a player in great form that should perform quite well at the World Cup with some very good fixtures in his group as well. Harder by Canada in match day one. We've stuck with Jamal Musiala at £8 million in the midfield as well. He's got Japan. He's probably the player that is the one we have the least confidence in, I would say out of the full starting 11 at the moment. So potentially could look for another potential replacement for Musiala at around that £8 million price tag. He does have a very good fixture of Japan though on match day one, and he's been in great touch for Bayern Munich as well in the Bundesliga. So if he can get good starting minutes for Germany in the international stage, I'm sure he'll be able to produce good goals and assists. <clears throat> So hopefully he can do that for us in match day one, but definitely the player that I'm not the most confident in just because he hasn't oh, he hasn't proven himself massively at that international stage just yet, even though Japan is a good fixture for him to do so. Just a bit of a wait and see kind of for Musiala to see how he explodes onto that international scene. And looking at the third starting midfielder, it's a player that I am pretty confident in performing well in Steven Bergwijn. He's been in superb uh, form for his side in the Eredivisie as well. He's got, I believe, uh, quite a few attacking contributions now. I believe at least over five in his first 14 Eredivisie games from memory. And he has been pretty solid in the Champions League as well. So I do think he could prove to be quite a nice attacking asset for the Netherlands in the World Cup. He is playing as a forward, so don't be uh, confused by his mid field positioning in fantasy as he does get further up the pitch than this and he does of course get the extra clean sheet point for being a midfielder as well if Netherlands do record a clean sheet so definitely a big fan of Bergwijn at just seven million pounds could be a nice budget option allows for extra money to be spent around the squad there uh, let's have a look at the forwards now. Messi, a pretty standard pick, one of the most popular players in World Cup fantasy as well. He's got Saudi Arabia as his first match day fixture, and that's why he's got the captain's armband for our side. We will obviously be captaining players that play earlier than him in the match days and then switching to Messi after, but he is just sitting on captaincy at this current point in time as he's the player that I'm most confident in getting returns. But of course, currency could change if he does blank. But for now, he does have the armband. <clears throat> he's been in great form for PSG in the uh, league win this season. He's got 17 goal contributions with 7 goals and 10 assists. So he's been in good touch there. And then he's got himself 7 goals in 15 matches for Argentina throughout the World Cup qualifiers. So not as prolific form for Argentina in the qualifiers, but we know how well he steps up. Uh, in the World Cup stage. 2014, he was massive in the World Cup. 2018, very, very good once again. And I'm hoping for some more of the same in 2022 with a very strong Argentina side that should hopefully get him lots of service. Looking at his strike partners, Neymar is here at ten and a half million pounds. One of my favourite forward options in a World Cup fantasy as well, and he was actually on our must-have players for World Cup fantasy. So I'm uh, very uh, obviously a big fan of him. He was. Uh, able to record 16 goal contributions for Brazil throughout the World Cup qualifiers, the Comma Bowl qualifiers, which was actually one of the most out of any player in this tournament. And he actually has one of the most attacking contributions for his country out of any of the premium forward options in World Cup fantasy. I believe he ranks in the top two or three amongst all players. Harry Kane was another one that was quite good there. And then Antoine Griezmann rounds out the forward line. I do really like him with just the 1% ownership, eight and a half million pounds. He is, in my opinion, starting in the best, the strongest France team. And with Australia and match day one, a great chance for him to get on the score sheet. He was able to record six goals in eight World Cup qualifying matches. So he was absolutely massive for France. He's getting more goals than the likes of Mbappe, in fact throughout those World Cup qualifiers, and he was chipping in with a couple of assists as well. So definitely a nice budget uh, option or alternative compared to the more expensive Mbappes and Benzema's who are quite highly owned amongst other managers. As obviously, as we spend the extra money on Neymar, we do have to spend it slightly less on Griezmann to be able to tick off that France attack, and I think Griezmann is a great way to do so. 
and then we have activated the 12th man ship we didn't explain the 12th man ship properly in the first uh, team selection video that we've made so we have actually elected our uh, harry kane as our 12th man here he's got iran we could have gone with mbappe i was tossing up between kane and mbappe but since i already had griezmann ticking off that france attack against australia I decided to go to capitalize on the England attack with a very good fixture of Iran. Kane was in absolutely superb form for England in the World Cup qualifiers, getting over a goal a game, in fact, in the World Cup qualifiers. He did actually have the most attacking contributions or goals out of any of these premium forwards and World Cup fans throughout the World Cup qualifiers. So that is why he is our 12th man for this match day. Definitely a big fan of him and hopefully he can perform quite well for England as well as he has been in very good form in the Premier League for Tottenham. Let's have a look at our bench now. Zach Stefan is the sub goalkeeper. He's coming in at £4 million. Quite a nice option at that price and I do expect him to be good value there. Benjamin provides at £5 million. He's most likely going to be coming on for any player that does blank throughout the match day. A big fan of provide at just £5 million. A great way to get into that France defence. And he can occasionally chip in with those attacking contributions there as well. So very uh, happy to have him on the side. Tick off that France attack against a very weak Australia team. One of the lowest ranked international teams in the World Cup. Uh, we've got with uh, DePaul as well as the other £5 million backup player on the bench. Midfielders do get extra points for key passes. And a couple of other defensive uh, contributions as well. And since the Paul is playing as a CDM for Argentina, locked in that starting position, he definitely could complete a couple of those defensive actions and maybe get a couple of key passes as well to get points in that manner. As CDMs are slightly more viable in World Cup fantasy compared to some of the other fantasy matches or fantasy uh, competitions such as FPL or UCL fantasy. So I do think the Paul could be a nice pick at five million pounds there. And at the third bench position, we have gone with another midfielder here. It's Abdulaziz Hatem. He's just coming in at four million pounds and looks to be a nailed start of Qatar in their World Cup side as he did play the majority of matches for them in their recent international fixtures so for a player of just four million pounds to get consistent starting minutes that's always going to be good value and if another one of the players in the squad does unfortunately blank Hatem just can come on and chip in with a couple of points there so he's always going to be a handy player to have in the squad uh, looking at some stats around the team, the squad value is coming in at £100 million, which of course means we have 0.0, .0 left in the bank. And just to confirm, we have activated our 12th man chip, and we have chosen Harry Kane as the player there. So I really like him with a good fixture against Iran, who well, hopefully he can get on the score sheet for England. Thanks for watching today's updated team selection for World Cup Fantasy. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you are liking the World Cup Fantasy related content, leave a like and subscribe and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our recent uploads. Also, check out the link in the description to our second channel, Footy Flare. We are going to be posting World Cup related and football related content in general over there. So check out that and with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.